Hi, I'm John McCann from Survival Resources. I'm often asked why I think that a mirror compass is more accurate than a base plate compass. So I thought I would address that issue today by showing both the mirror compass and the base plate compass, how they're aimed and why I feel that this is superior to this. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to show you some of the similarities and differences to the base plate and mirror compasses. These two here are base plate compasses, and this is a mirror compass. The lid is open, you can see the mirror here. Okay, you will notice that each of these have an orienting arrow. This is this line inside the housing, which is red on one side, black on the other. This is what you put your magnetic needle in when you're shooting an azimuth. They each have a magnetic needle. They each have a rotating housing and they all have meridian lines, which are these lines down here inside the rotating housing. Now these are similarities, there's other similarities sometimes, they have different markings for inches, meters, they have magnifying lenses on them. But the difference between the base plate and the mirror is you will notice on the base plate there's a direction to travel arrow. This one has a singular one, this one has two. Okay, with a mirror compass, what do you have up here is a V-notch. And what this notch does is it allows you to aim through here using that notch like you would the rear sight of a handgun or rear sight of any type of a gun. So I wanted you to see the similarities and differences in these before we move on with the video. Okay, let me state right up front that this is not a learning video on how to set up an azimuth on a compass. I'm assuming that you either have gotten an azimuth or you've picked out an item in ahead of you and that you've dialed in that azimuth. The idea of this is to show you how to get to that item or that thing that you're aiming on using the two different compasses. Now with a base plate compass, the best way to hold this would be straight out in front of you like this so that you would be aiming directly on the tree or whatever it is that you're heading for. The problem you can already see with me doing this is that you cannot see if Fred is in the shed. In order to do that, you have to keep the compass down at this level so that you can see that Fred is in the shed, okay? The problem with this being now, using your direction arrows, direction of travel arrows, it's very hard for you to line this compass up very precisely on what you're heading for. If you're heading for a specific tree, it's going to be very hard to pick out that tree. Now what we're going to do is move the camera and we're going to show you what we're talking about. Okay, what I'm going to do now is we put a one of our orange flags that we use for our classes on map and compass on a tree up here and I'm going to zoom out and show you where that is and then show you why it's difficult to aim on something like that. Okay, as you can see, that's a pretty good distance away. Now, if I'm holding this at chest level like this, but I'm going to be facing this way, it's hard to do this on video, but you can see now, if I got to hold this down in order to be able to see my magnetic needle, when you aim this on that tree, th there's a, quite a, a bit of movement here where it's hard to put this directly right on that tree. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, now we're going to deal with the mirror compass or address the mirror compass. As you know that when we discuss the bait plate compass, it has to be kept low. The advantage of a mirror compass is you can keep it up high. Now I've seen some instructors or some people show that you take a mirror compass and you bring it up to your cheek like this to look through there. This is not the way this was designed to be used. What that was designed for was a lensatic compass. This happens to be a lensatic compass. And you can see with a lensatic compass, it has a magnifying lens here, which has to be angled in order to see the degree lines on the floating dial. 
and that has to be set up. It also has a thumb loop on it, and the idea of that is it's held up against the cheek so that you can look down through this magnifying lens and then aim up, aim through the little point on the front on this wire line here. So this compass has to be held up to the cheek in order for it to function properly and for you to use it properly. Now with a mirror compass, what you want to do with this is you want to hold it out straight in front of you like this. You want to lock your shoulders and then you're going to lower the mirror until you can see that you're on the azimuth that you're heading on and then you're going to aim straight out with this thing place try to find something that's online with your azimuth a tree something like that once you're on that tree you can aim very precisely now if you held this back here it's not going to be as precise it's i use the analogy of a handgun when you take a handgun, you do not take the handgun and you do not hold it back here in your cheek. Number one, that wouldn't be the best way to shoot a handgun, I'll tell you that. But the reason for that is, as you bring the gun out, your rear sight, which is sort of like your V-notch on a mirror compass, is going to allow you to use the item that's way out there to be aligned in that V-notch. If you bring it right back here, this V-notch is huge, okay? And the item you're trying to aim on is going to be very difficult to align in that V. Let me show you another way. If we're doing this way, and you got a V. Now there's a tree out there that we know right there that has the flag on it. If you put the V like this on that tree, you can see that you can get that tree right in the middle of the V. The further you move that V out, the more precise you can get. But if you bring this V all the way in, like this, look how big that tree is. It would be very difficult to get that centered in that V. So as you bring the V out, it becomes much more precise. And that's the whole idea of with the mirror compass. Now the other thing with the mirror compass is there is a line down the middle of the mirror. Now the, the reason for that is because when you're using any type of a compass, you want it flat. You don't want it leaning to the left, to the right, forward or back. This line, what you do is you line that line of the mirror up with the pivot point. The pivot point that your needle pivots on. And once you line that line up with that pivot, what it does it is allows you to make sure that you're not to the left or to the right or dipped at an angle. It makes it much more precise. So now you have the V-notch, which is out in front of you. You're holding it out like this. And now you can aim this thing very accurately. And what we'll do is we'll give you a shot looking through this at the tree over here that has the flag on it. So you can see how precise you can get with this compass. As you can see now, we're aimed right on the tree and you can see that the V-notch, aiming notch in the front, is on the tree and you can see that the magnetic needle is in the orienting arrow that Fred is in the shed. So now you know that you're heading in the right direction, which whatever azimuth you have dialed into this compass now, you would be heading directly to that tree and you, you're a positive aim on it because of the way that you're looking straight through the mirror and at the same time you're able to see the needle up here in the uh, orienting arrow. Well, there you have it. A real quick video on why I think a mirror compass is more accurate to navigate with than a base plate compass. Now, I don't have any issues with the base plate compass. I've used them. But if I want to do real accurate navigation, I'm always going to go to my mirror compass. I think I've explained my reasoning why, and I, I think you'll understand that the reasons that this is much more accurate than this. As usual, I want to thank you for joining us. We thank you for supporting survival resources, our store, our articles, our videos, and we'll see you next time around.